I just want to like very directly address this crux of why are LLMs in a much different position with respect to true AGI than Alpha Zero? Why are they actually the base on which like adding in a few extra drops of this kind of uh, care and attention yeah. uh, gets us to human level intelligence? I think uh, one important point is that when you look at Alpha Zero, it does have all of those ingredients. Yeah. Um, and in particular, I think like the intellectual ceiling goes like quite contra what I was saying before, which is like we've demonstrated this incredible complexity of like yeah. math and programming problems. Yeah. Right. Um, I do think that the type of task and setting that Alpha Zero were, like worked in this two-player perfect information uh, like game basically is incredibly friendly to RL algorithms, um, and the reason it took so long. To, to get to like a more AGI, proto AGI style models, is you do need to crack that like general conceptual understanding of like the world and language and this kind of stuff. And you need to get the initial reward signal on tasks that you care about in the real world, which are like harder to specify than games. Um, and I think then that like that, that sort of like gradient signal that comes from the real world, like all of a sudden you get access to it and you can start climbing it. Um, yeah. Whereas Alpha Zero didn't didn't ever have like the first rung to pull on. Yeah, yeah. Mm. This, this goes back to the monkeys on the typewriter. I yeah, think, and like the pre-training model. And until you had something like GPT three, GPT four, it just couldn't generate coherent enough sentences to even begin to do RLHF and tell it what you liked and didn't like. Yeah. Mm. If we don't have even reasonably robust um, or weakly robust computer use agents by this time next year, are we living in the the bust timeline as in 2030 or bust? I would be extremely surprised if that was the case. And yeah. I think that would be like somewhat of an update towards like there's something like strangely difficult about yeah. this, like computer use in particular. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's the bust timeline, but it's definitely like the, I would update on this being like a lengthening of timelines. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think more and more it's no longer a question of speculation if people are skeptical, I'd encourage like using Claude code or like some agentic tool like it and just seeing what the current level of, of capabilities are. Tweeting um, is so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, like the models are getting really capable at tasks that we care about and we can yeah. give them enough data for. Yeah. And and I mean the circuits results from interpretability are also pointing in the direction that they're doing very reasonable, generalizable things. Uh, and so, yeah, th th this question matters a lot, but um, I'm surprised by how many deep learning critics just like haven't really interacted with the models or haven't in a while. And constantly move the goalposts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, like the Turing test used to be a thing, right? Like <laughs> yeah. now we don't even talk about it and it'd be like silly to think that it was a meaningful test. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, that being said, one caveat on that is like if software engineering is just like dramatically better than computer use, I mean, computer use still sucks. Then I'd be like, still like, oh, or maybe everyone just kept focusing on software engineering. Like it was just like by far the most valuable thing. Like, like yeah. every marginal person and dollar went towards software engineering. I don't think that's the case. I do think like computer use is valuable enough that like uh, you know people will care about it. Yeah. Uh, but that would be like my that's my one like escape patch that I'm putting in place for next year. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks. <laughs>